from the Mayor of London, Mr. Boris Johnson. Oh no, Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, geeks and their mothers. I'm delighted to have been asked to open the show and turn on the lights, even though I am a bit of a duffer when it comes to gadgets and gizmos, as most of you will probably know. So it only remains for me to wish you all a startlingly good Christmas, a prosperous new year, and to declare these lights well and truly lit. <laughs> Our signer in today. How you doing, Peter? Yeah, you're not used to being in the spotlight like that, are you? How are you doing? <laughs> Give it up for Peter. Yeah. Fantastic stuff. Okay, we may notice one of the gadgets our family is missing today. 
Yes, uh, of course, Polly's talking about the lovely Rachel oh, Riley, our newest uh, recruit to the Gadget Show family. Unfortunately, Rachel can't be with us for this performance. Yes, she's very busy. However, Rachel being Rachel, didn't want to miss out completely. So now, we are going to go live, and I do mean live, to the Countdown Studio. Hey, Rachel! Hello! How's it going? Good, oh, thank you. We're great. We're good out there. Thank you very much. We're feeling good. And may I say, you two are looking good, girlfriend. Stop it, Mr. Bradbury. Anyway, I'm so sorry that I can't be there. As well as being live in the Countdown studio, I'm also furiously rehearsing for Strictly Come Dancing. So I know I did do a bit of quantum maths in my time, but I can't be in three places at once. Sorry, guys. Quite understandable. The work going on is extremely good of you to join us live here. And indeed, I must be afraid what Jason said earlier. You are looking very hot, girlfriend. <laughs> oh, <laughs> coming from you, it sounds a lot more wholesome, so thank you very much, John. Oh, Rachel, um, I just had uh, quite a good idea. Hmm? I'm thinking, why don't we play a game of Gadget Show Countdown? What a totally amazing, spontaneous idea. I mean, <laughs> we've got this live link, we've got the countdown board, so maybe I could pick some letters, uh -huh. and then the Gadget Show live audience could find the longest tech-related word, and maybe the longest one wins a prize. See, how does she do that? That's exactly what I was thinking. I think it's a great idea. I reckon we can also use that table, which conveniently has a dictionary on it. A dictionary corner. Johnny, what are you up for that? Excellent. Cool. cool. And then we can all play Countdown with Rachel Riley off the telly. That is a plan, my Do you mind if I go first? Please, please do. Great. Okay, you guys over here, you are mighty. I hope you're very good at anagrams because whoever wins this will win themselves a prize. Okay, Polly, choose your letters. Can I have a consonant, please? Thank you. Start with P. Okay, let's try a vowel. O. Uh, let's try another vowel. Another O. Calm yourselves. Okay, let's give a consonant, please. <laughs> C. And uh, let's try another one. R. And another one. Another R. Okay, let's go for a vowel this time. E. And uh, let's just throw in a couple more consonants. S. And the final one. Another S. Nice. Oh, Polly, you appear to have spelled Poopress. Yeah. What a lovely image for us. Yeah, I mean, you say that, it's actually quite serious. I had a case of Poopress, I took it to the doctor. Thank you, Jason. The big, the big red pussy. Uh, okay, team, are you ready? We are looking for a techie word. The longer, the better. So here are your letters up on the screen. In fact, there is a nine letter word up there, so who thinks they know what a nine letter word go on, is? Go on, go on, Phil, go on, Phil. Up. Let me uh, see what you are. Show me this. Oh, there's a little boy up there. He's gonna go for a run. Oh, sorry. Oh, way up here. Hello, my darling. What's your name? Sam. Okay, Sam. Processor. What do you think the word is? Processor. Okay, let's have a look. It's a Bentley processor. Processor is correct. Oh, round of applause, gentlemen. Brilliant. It also means the food processor in gadgetry terms. One of the first was invented by a German company, Electrostar, in 1946. And intriguingly, it was available with a vacuum cleaner attachment. How do you know these things, John? <laughs> well, who is that woman sat next to you? Is that you? Is that Mrs. Bentley? It's not actually the current Mrs. Bentley, no. <laughs> Future. Right, is it the former Mrs. Bentley? <laughs> <laughs> no, is no, it no. Mrs. Bentley? No, no, no. no. No, 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 Mrs. Bentley is uh, Mrs. Bentley's doing some decorating at home. Is it the next Mrs. Bentley? I. Oh my oh. god! <laughs> <laughs> Moving on! Okay, we're about to start the room. Would you like to play a little bit of countdown with Rachel Riley off the telly? Yeah. Back at you, cowboy. Okay, brilliant. So, uh, what do I do now? I've completely forgotten what we're doing. Come on, get on with it, Bradbury. All right. Oh yeah, it's a consonant first, isn't it? Uh, then a vowel, uh, then two consonants. Uh, a vowel, a consonant, a vowel, and two consonants. Well, if you want to play it like that, then you can have O, E, C, T, U, Brexit. M, O, P, and S. And only you, Jason Bradbury, could spell out rectum ops. Well done, sir. 
Nothing wrong with it. Great team ops is my favourite computer game. It's not black ops, you know, you, but you keep your troops in the rear. <laughs> Whatever. Okay, I, I'm just going to show you this because this lab was wearing it in the front row and it freaked me out. I thought it might freak you out too. Isn't that just the scariest thing? It's not putting me off at all, is it? Where is it? You put the back on. There you go. And freaking me out there. What have we got here? A smartphone slim handset for someone to oh. win it in. Of course, they can make an intelligible uh, computer phrase from the letters up on the screen. Where we're going. Young man, you're lucky, clever chap. First of all, what's your name? Max. Where are you from? London. London. And what do you think the word is? Computers. John. Absolutely correct, Max. Well done. Well done. Round of applause. Hey, you play that, man? That's cool, isn't it? Intriguingly, the word computer was first used in 1613 in a book uh, called The Young Man's uh, or something, I think it was called. It's a very peculiar book. But eventually it referred to somebody who was very good at arithmetic, not the computer as it is in the present sense. Oh. Wow, it's like every day is a school day with Mr. Bentley. Isn't it is. It? Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's all the time we have for Gadget Show Canada. So let's give our gorgeous Rachel the biggest Gadget Show Live Show. Okay, so Polly, why don't we tell this lot what this whole uh, Gadget Show Live Christmas thing is all about? Absolutely. So at Gadget Show Live Christmas, what we try to do is emulate the famous Christmas song, The Twelve Days of Christmas, but we replace those days with the Twelve Technical Days of Christmas. Uh, yes, so uh, we're going to bring on a bunch of really, really cool gadget presents and assign each of them a number from 1 to 12 for the 12 days of Christmas. Yes, and we're also going to bring on 12 different acts. So we have an act for each day, then we have a present to put under the tree for each day. But the best bit is, at the end of the show, one of you is going to win the whole lot, which is worth nearly £3,000. One of you is going to win the entire lot, and all you have to do in order to enter is tell us your name, text it, and the number on the screen right now. That means you've got to stop recording. Name. So we need your first name followed by your surname, and remember to send it to the number 0203 322 4926. So your first name followed by your surname to the number on the screen. And don't worry, we'll give you a couple of Hurry minutes up. during the show. So again, have about 40 minutes. Well, I'm recording with mine. Don't worry too much, why not? Brilliant. So, uh, I think we're just about done adjusted with the first day of Christmas, day number one, one missing gadget show presenter. Which means I can now put our first present underneath the tree. Now you'll be bringing it out right here. So we have the TP-Link Wi-Fi extenders, which are going under the tree, and the awesome Bayer Dynamic Custom One Pro headphones, which are brilliant. Well, the Bayer Dynamics are awesome. They've got that physical slider, which actually, it actually affects the physical size um, of the sonic chamber in the speaker, yeah. so it's very well on mid range and more bass, you actually adjust the size of it. It's crazy, isn't it? It's and you can find those on the Superfly stand downstairs and also the TP Links, I think L20, you right. will have looking at the exhibition. It's Thank you, see Polly. Okay, so moving straight on to the second day of Christmas, uh, which has to be the two most exciting gadget releases of this year. In fact, strictly speaking, they're not even released yet. Uh, I am, of course, talking now. about the PS4 Put my on the Xbox One. Yes, indeed. It's very exciting stuff. In fact, I've not been this excited about a gadget release since you know, the PS3 and the Xbox 360. <laughs> so you'll probably remember, back in June, it was E3 in LA, the biggest gaming exposition on the planet. And the gadget show sent two of the most popular gamers on the planet. Uh, in terms of YouTube followers, KSI and the ever elegant Ali A to go and check out the consoles on our behalf. And the news is good, folks, because they both thought both consoles had something incredibly cool to offer. It's good, that looks insane. It's the landscape. It looks really slick. Uh, the analog sticks floor a lot better as well. What a drift. What a drift. <laughs> This just really shows off the capabilities and the power, just the amount of stuff that's going on on screen and the detail of the individual characters is amazing. You can definitely tell it's a next generation system. A next generation system, as Ali A said, and how right he is. 
Uh, both machines are astonishing. That last game, of course, was Rise. Ancient Rome on the Xbox One. Now, that's how you should be teaching history, in my opinion. Uh, but guess what, folks? We've got one of those consoles right here and right now, only millimetres away from those of you on the front row. Uh, the PS4 is in the house, ladies and gentlemen. Check it out. It looks like a sort of combination of, uh, I don't know, how and the monolith from uh, 2001. It's got a sort of 1970s aesthetic to it. I think it's quite cool looking. Um, I've got a game, Killzone, Shadow Fall, to show you. Uh, it's an adult title, and because obviously we've got some really games to deal with it, so I do any uh, crazy stuff. But I will just play through it a little bit um, and tell you about the internals, what's under the bonnet, so to speak. An eight core processor. So the brain is an eight core processor, which really means multitasking is better than ever before. You can download an entire game, install at the same time, while also downloading uh, data, streaming, uh, video on demand, for example, and at the same time as doing all of those things, you can be playing a gra gra graphically intensive game like this. And Killzone really does look beautiful, that motion capture is there, uh, it sounds incredible. Uh, in terms of graphics, you've got 1.8 teraflops of graphics memory to play with. And that's a lot. Um, for example, a teraflop is equal to one million million floating point calculations per second. Look out the window with us here. That's what I'm talking about. All these objects are rendered in 3D space. Each pixel rendered in 3D space. You can run around it, you can manipulate it, you can play with it, you can destroy it. I'll show you what I mean by that. If we just jump into the level, look. I'll just jump over here. And I'll throw a grenade onto this glass roof. You can see it's a glass roof, glass roof with the um, light reflecting off it. If I chuck that in there, you'll see all the different individual shards of glass exploding. Look at that. And all of these buildings can react in the same way. If I was to shoot through the walls, you would see uh, the bullet take a different trajectory through granite, say, as opposed to wood. Uh, even RAM has been massively increased. Uh, 8 gig of DDR5 RAM on this machine, as opposed to 512 meg on the PS3. That's an increase of 16 times. It's, a, it's, it's so exciting. Both machines have a huge amount to offer, but only one of them is here right now. I'm going to switch it off. Why am I doing that during the demo, you might ask? It's so I can unplug the power and the HDMI, pick it up, and put it under the tree for one of you to win. <laughs> yes, one of you is going to win the PS4, as well as lots of other really, really cool kits today. And all you've got to do is send us your first name and your surname. Now, so right now. Number. How cool is that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Woohoo! Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. So, we're going to have a double three. Now, obviously, we've got an audience live. We don't need to tell people what an MP3 is and how it works. But I think it's probably worth reminding ourselves how influential it's been to modern gadgetry. We now carry around tens of thousands of tracks in your pocket and it's revolutionised the music industry and helped make possible the um, iconic iPod. This is a 2004 60 gigabyte version. It's amazing, it still works. And it still looks very, very good looking. However, However, one of my favourite recent additions to the digital music peripherals market has to be this. This is the Berlin Boombox. It retails for around 60 to 70 pounds, but it's a cardboard iPod dock, and it will take you only about 15 minutes to assemble. It's one of the funnest pieces of gadget eccentricity I think I've seen. So clearly with a box like that, what you yeah. need is somebody to come on stage, turn it on, and do some uh, body popping street dance moves. That would be cool. However, it has, I was thinking actually of doing it myself, but it has been a while since uh, Mrs. Bentley and I attempted to pop rock and drop. I'd, so, love, I'd love to see it though. So <laughs> instead, I'd like to welcome on stage two of Britain's very finest dancers. Please give a hugely warm welcome to the magnificent Twist Rat. Oh, oh, look! Oh, I love Twist and Pulse! Love it, guys. Uh, however, you're about to show some really cool moves, aren't you? Okay, fellas, take your positions. I'm going to use my boom box. Are you ready? In three, two, Watch. Hi, hey, hello. Basically, right, just imagine two guys that love dancing. Wanna take it to the next level and take over the world? Well, yeah. Um, that's us. Twist and pulse. Yeah, 
say, I guess there's nothing left to say, say, say. Yes. But the fire is so delightful. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. That's what it's all coming from earlier. Yes, okay, let me explain. In a month's time, the Gadget Show launches in China to a potential audience of 800 million people with a full Chinese cast. Take a look. Chopsticks, or other rather special sort of foam cover that they actually brought with them themselves from China, and this air hockey ping pong and hockey table, which uh, is also to be seen on the uh, Liberty Game stand at D70 just outside the toy arena. So lots of Chinese themed prizes. There is, so that's day four done, and I guess now we're moving on to day five. Yep, moving on to day five, the fifth day of Christmas, and for this, we've got a real treat, a real treat for you. Uh, we met this guy during the first Gadget Show Live Christmas that we did this time last year, the XL in London. Uh, and we were so impressed by him, and everyone loved him so much, we just had to bring him back. He is, without a shadow of a doubt, one of the best human beatboxers in the world. And he's here to perform for you right now in his Christmas jumper. Give it up for Shlomo! <laughs> hey Gadget Show, how you doing? No, 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 that's it. Hey Gadget Show, how are you doing? My name is Shlomo, and I'm a beatboxer, which means I make music using my mouth. 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 
magnificent prize to come the tree for day five, oh, which is one of those Roland Boss RC505 loop station samplers that he was using at exactly the same as worth over £500 magnificent addition to the prizes. Wow, that is incredible. It's looking very healthy under the tree. Oh, yeah. Okay, so now we're moving on to day six, and we thought we'd get a little bit Christmassy for day six. So, in a few moments' time, there'll be guys moving some stuff onto the stage, and they are from a specialist movie effects company called Snow Business. And as the name suggests, they specialise in movie effect snow. They've worked on films like Harry Potter, Love Actually, Notting Hill, some of the Bond movies. In fact, if you've ever seen a film with snow in, it's quite likely that those guys have created it. So, we've got a little video to show you of some of the projects that Snow Business have worked on. And just remember, as you're watching it, Every single flake of snow is not real. in snow businesses like the laboratory and they these all kinds of different compounds. Generally it's a polymer base that they use. Um, this first one is the most unusual of any ways because it's not even a snow, it's actually an ice. And it sits on a window pane and gives that sort of Dickensian look, that sort of, you know, uh, old worldy Christmas morning through the window pane. Can I have some appropriate music, please? Yeah, and that's alright. Yeah, Antiques Roadshow, that'll do. So I'm gonna drop the guys of, I don't know, Tiny Tim, whoever. On Christmas morning, I'll take the glasses off. Good morning. Oh look, it's been snowing all through the night. Look outside. I've, I've become Joe Vespoli, that was quite good, isn't it? <laughs> it's very. This, 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 this only works, of course, because I'm in the middle of dental surgery, but I've had implants. So the teeth actually at this point in the show are working for me. Yeah. Good morning. <laughs> look at the snow outside my window. I love you, Mother. And I love you, Father. And most of all, I love you, Christmas. <laughs> I think you should leave them out, James. <laughs> I really enjoyed that. I mean, you were quite good. Excellent, it's jolly good. <laughs> and the, uh, the second type of snow we got is extremely messy. So messy, in fact, that we were sending a camera backstage and demonstrating it round there. It's the sort of snow that snow business used to cover large areas of the countryside, buildings, trees, that sort of thing. We thought that would be fun to see if a man could be turned into a snowman, which is our grumpy producer up there, Richard. And uh, what the technology is, is basically a little bit of paper mixed with water to create sort of instant papier mache. So let him have it. Oh, sod. Good. Excellent. Now, um, uh, the largest area they've covered with this stuff is about 100 acres of parkland surrounding Blenheim Palace, uh, which they then have to put a membrane on the ground first so it's easy to clear up afterwards. But uh, certainly coming up, Richard, reasonably well, but I'm not convinced it's making him any less grumpy. Well done, anyway, Richard. Thank you. That is like the most miserable snowman I think I've ever seen. <laughs> okay, so we're moving on to snow effect number three, and this one is in the backpack here. It's a dry foam, so this creates those big snowflakes that fall very beautifully. They're used in those romantic movies like Notting Hill and Love Actually. Do at the end where the couple's in the middle of the street and the camera crane pulls away and they're just holding each other and it's all quite sickly sweet. <laughs> I've always dreamt of having that moment. So who wants to do a love scene in the green? <laughs> I thought there was a response there. Okay, well, just However, the person that's put the hand up here looking rather disinterested. You think you don't pay me? Stand up, please, sir. What's your name? Steve. Steve. Okay. Um, now, Steve, I've always dreamt of being swept off my feet. I love how you do that. Okay, and I think you're the man to do this. So I've devised a script, so I'm going to say my line, and then you're going to say your lines. You can read, can't you? <laughs> and are they your own team? Yes. Brilliant, we've got to keep you, Jace. I am loving this. Can we get some romantic music, please? Oh, darling. Say that we'll be together forever. Yes. Say it. 
I see now that you are the most beautiful gadget show presenter. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel's eyes are too big, and she's not as good as you at doing the scary stuff. <laughs> You're actually even better than Jason and John, or we never leave you. Oh my god. Hold me close, I never, never let go. Fourth type of snow, again, okay, actually, isn't really snow, it's, it's ice. Um, snow is scoured the world to find the perfect resin to make into icicles. And they ended up by finding it because they were walking down the streets in Los Angeles past the open door of a company that made resin coated dolphins. And here it is, pretty realistic, I think, jolly good, and what's more, pretty economical. It only costs 50p per vertical inch. <laughs> That's quite good, isn't it? Wow. Yes. So how much would your house cost? Well, well I don't know, Bentley Towers and Rubik's, I think about 50 quid would do it, on every would do it. Bentley Towers? Yes. Okay. <laughs> good stuff. Okay, we're moving on to the fifth type of gadgety tech snow. Uh, and this, again, is a polymer. Uh, it's very fine, though. It's the finest particles uh, of any of the snows that we're looking at. And uh, it's interesting because this stuff really expands. So if you had enough water to add it into this part here, it would, it's actually capable of expanding 4,000 times its own size, so wow. you can really cover huge areas with a very small amount of this stuff. It is quite fun though when you do add water, they've not given me too much water for obvious reasons, but this should get the idea across. Hopefully it will all mix and you'll see it, there you go, you can see it starting to rise, you can see it? Isn't, it, isn't that interesting, look? That's incredible. Look at that. Just watch it come What's out. What's it feel like, like um, it, It's actually very cold to touch. It takes on the, the sort of ambient temperature of the water, uh, oh, wow. and so, if I shake it a little bit, Look at that, isn't that interesting? It's, it's cool to touch, it's really cool to touch, but it doesn't have the, the flight characteristics of your dry foam. Look, you wouldn't want that really for the snowfall, it just doesn't look right in the air. Well, it, where it does <laughs> look right, right. <laughs> it's obviously it's very good times. Like, there you go, yeah, try like it. That. Uh, where it does look right, it's here. Can you see I've got a great uh, crate full of it here? And it's remarkable, I mean, if you make shapes in it look, it looks just like snow does. In fact, it retains its shape. Uh, I mean, over time, say half an hour, if a truck's driven through it on a movie set, it comes back up. So it's really useful. Let's demonstrate that by getting a youngster to do a snow age. Who's up for that? Me, 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 a tiny person. A little person, yeah? Little person. A little person. Okay, let me, go right, look, let me just go right to the back. Oh, this is like a little if you're little, grey jumper, very, very bad. If you're little and you're up at the back, then it's got to be hard to see. Here we are. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Am I, are you on your own? Um, no. But you just don't like your family. It's just a social you know. Right, let's go. What's your name? Kian. Is it? Kian. Kian. Oh, okay, Kian. Is that right? Okay, awesome. Let's do it. Nice. Nice. Uh, you're you rocking the one. You came to the You're rocking the one, Superman. Check him out. Looking good. <laughs> Okay, sorry so far. Okay, watch yourself, let's slip on this stuff. So imagine, look, it's Christmas morning, just jump up here, and you're running outside in your onesie, all right? Jump up here, my man. Okay, good lad, right. Now what we used to do is uh, get, get into the crate, but you be careful, because it, it is slipping. Put your hand back here, and your legs down that corner. And have a little play. Knock yourself out, and you get, in you get, you're gonna get in, into, you wanna climb in there, look like me, climb in. That's the way to do it. That's the way to do it. Now, lie down on your back. I'll hold you. Okay, we'll, we'll, go, with, we'll go your way. We'll go your way. <laughs> go for it. Snow angel, just like on the job called Van Dam Beer advert. Bigger, bigger movements. Bigger arms, bigger arms. Much Where? bigger, much bigger. There That's you what go. What talking about? Look That's at that. It's snow angel. It's not bad. That is a perfect use for a onesie though, isn't it? Yeah. Ah, brilliant. Was it Kian? I think it was. Kian, ladies and gentlemen, is Snow Angel. Very good, let me still give my hand in man. Let's take your hand. What a brilliant Snow Angel. Okay, so we're going to move on to the sixth effect. And for this, I need a little bit of help. So, uh, Naomi and Hayley, if you wouldn't mind coming out, my darlings, and grabbing a bucket. Jason and John, help oh, yourself to these. Um, because the sixth effect is snowballs. Yeah. Now, these look like real snowballs, but they don't have uh, the same characteristics as snowballs. In other words, the uh, flight is a little bit lighter, you squidge them, they retain their shape. Oh, damn. 
They're not cold, which is what snow would be like. It's all right, don't worry, they don't bite. You can catch them. There we go. Have a feel for yourself, see what you think. It's quite unusual, aren't they? They get you fly very beautifully. It'd be nice to have a snowball fight. In fact, there's quite a few of them out there, isn't there? So I'm thinking, how about you guys? Okay, start off. Yeah? You ready? Yeah, bring it. Bye! sleep under it, or for antennas. They put antennas, really high antennas, as high as this building, okay. uh, using this material from something that you can fit in the backpack. And that's what this material is. Let's have a look. Deploy them then. Are you ready for deployment? Let's see. Okay, here we go. Is that it? <laughs> oh! <laughs> I think I clipped a bauble. <laughs> oh! Oh, my word. Thank goodness you already have children. That's oh. Yeah, this, that's interesting, James. Balance, look. You could, you actually make that. Wait here all day now. You make it look really uncomfortable, though. It's not. No, honestly. Okay, there's a metal plate under here that Uh you probably can't see on camera. There's a metal plate under my bar. And that's uh, more That's more to do with the fact that when we build these things on the gadget show, we have to be a little bit careful, yes. especially if we're going to get members of the public on the street like we did in that film doing it, right? Uh-huh. But um, you could make this out of a strong plastic and you, and you could refine this. Could you? I'm not quite You're sure. not convinced, I don't are know. you? I'm kind of looking at the 
Oh. I've got loads of people wandering around having that strapped to their backside. I think, what? Really. There's nothing wrong with it, look. No. You've got it, you can hardly see it. Okay, well, wall it up, let's see how that goes. <laughs> you can, I haven't got to that bit yet. Oh, so once you deploy it, that's what you look like. You kind of remain deployed, Matt. <laughs> you remain deployed, you know what I mean. <laughs> Make sure you tell the girls to take your pants off when you go backstage. I will. Thank you very much. <laughs> Lovely. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the chair pants. So that was day seven. That is wearable technology. So we're going to put a present in front of the industry. Um, again, to be wearable tech. And that's these. It's the hyphen high core foam gloves. Thank you, my darling. Thanks, Hayley. Uh, which actually do work, even though Jace devised something very similar back in about 2006. This is the real deal. These are available. And I do use mine. They're very cool. And I'm a photographer, which is a camera that is wearable around your neck. You're going to have a look at it downstairs in the Q72. It literally takes images and photographs uh, as you wear it and walk around and elements change. So speed or light to dark. And it will take a photograph so you have a, a recollection of your whole day in pictures. Okay, so day seven is done. We're now on to day eight. And for today, we have a very, very special guest. We have a bona fide American movie star. Now, do uh, many of you remember the Police Academy series of movies? Yes. Oh, yes, we do indeed. Well, you're probably going to know this guy a little bit better than a Sergeant Lavelle. Most oh, of them wicked. Are jokes. He's a he is a yeah. walking special face library. He's he was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And he's about to show it to you now, ladies and gentlemen. Sure, he's he is. Is. Stage. Mm -hmm. Mr. Michael Winslow! so far. And they can hear you back there. They appreciate that. I'm like, I make noises. I made a few too many on the plane. <laughs> they started it. It was a normal flight, you know. That's first class. I got the economy seat. <laughs> Flight tenant mad at me. He didn't like no, Did you know that it is a crime to the sound of the flight attendant call button on your crew? It is now. She had the trolley, you know, she's going out down the center now. Now it's the size of your fingernail, and it doesn't cost anything. 
And it makes noises, you telephone. <laughs> Please answer. Shut up, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Now, we come to gift number eight. Are you ready to see it? Yeah. You kids ready to see that? Kids ready to see it? Yeah! <laughs> oh, sorry. Have fun. But it's behind the security. Me <laughs> too! <laughs> <laughs> For Chinese television. <laughs> <laughs> what? Hey, I know the fool as well. Yeah, I used to be out all the time, didn't you? I'm sure you're funny, but maybe. We gotta see Kip number eight. You ready to see this? We gotta hurry along. But uh, there's a lot of security, so I gotta ride up. I gotta be careful about this. Come on! Okay, let's go! Excuse me, which way is to there? Alright, let's take a look at this uh, fireball. <laughs> oh, another fireball. <laughs> Hang on, I don't think it is. Mom and Dad know that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ready to see it? It's hot. This gift is hot. It's a hot one. Just go. Daddy, what's radiation? No <laughs> gift number eight. Uh, uh, uh. Sony PS Vita. I've had a great time seeing you all. This goes under the tree. Enjoy Christmas. Happy Christmas, everyone. Take care. Give it up for Michael Legend. Michael Legend. For real. Just throw that mic down. Man. Oh, that was beautiful. Can I just press that button? Just... Oh, please press pound now. Thank you very much, Michael. You put that under the tree, my main man. See you later. Oh, amazing. This is amazing. In a human body. Um, so we're going to move on now to day nine, and it's going to be a quickie. We're just going to cut straight to the chase and put the present under the tree for day nine. Uh, I don't know where my camera's gone. That is this Ion Action Camera. Okay, these things are really, really cool. We use them a lot on the Gadget Show. Uh, stand J40 down in the auditorium is where you'll see them. Uh, but you'll also see the footage from them often on the Gadget Show. We wear them on our helmets, we wear them uh, attached to our jet powered bicycles or whatever it is. Uh, really great, ruggedized. Water is an action camera, 1080p, full HD, not so far that, on it goes. Right, now, moving swiftly on, we come to the 10th day of Christmas. And this is the most exciting day of our 12 days, because we're going to do an experiment involving all of you, all right? This is going to be so cool. I'm going to explain exactly what your role is in a minute, but first of all, just bear with me and give a huge Gadget Show Live Christmas welcome to the world's first ever autonomous robotic comedian. It's comedy Robo Jace. Oh, he did that bubble on the big show, didn't he? Ladies, it was that one good looking machine. In he comes there, raising his newly designed arm. Not sure if he's taking me aside, but anyway, he's coming in. <laughs> he's coming in. Okay, so uh, each series of the gadget show, we upgrade Robo Jace. I mean, I say we, he really is the brainchild. Well, not the brainchild, but the work child of uh, Robo Challenge there in the auditorium. Uh, basically, we give them crazy ideas, and these uh, amazing guys, you can see them in the auditorium near the uh, Top Gear ride, they make it all happen for us. And the brief this time around was 
to make the world's first robot comedian. Now, I don't just mean a machine that just repeats verbatim gags that we've already put into the uh, machine, but a robot that can actually think, all right? A robot with a, a brain, a speech synthesis engine. Bear that in mind when you see him perform. Bear that in mind, please, because I haven't recorded these jokes, all right? I haven't recorded a single... I've recorded words, phrases, consonants and vowels. When you hear him talk, you'll think it's me. It's not. He's bringing those consonants and vowels together to form sentences. Okay? And the jokes in his brain, there's 50 of them in total, were created by a comedian called Mark Felgate. He's a top comedian. Um, and he's been involved in the process the whole time. He even coached Robo Jace in ways of delivering the gags. Okay? Now, what's your role? He's got 50 jokes. He's now going to choose randomly from that selection of 50 jokes, okay, and deliver them to you in a little comedy routine. And based on your reaction, he's going to decide which of those 50 jokes he should try and use when he does his comedy performance at a real comedy club with real comedians in a few weeks' time. So your reactions are absolutely critical to this process. Also, he's got cameras uh, on the back and just on the back this time, recording all of you. So you'll also uh, stand a pretty good chance of being on the show when it's on, on the telly in a few weeks' time. Please react. Please give him some warmth. In fact, react like you would if it was a young, newbie comedian and you just wanted to give him some support in a comedy club. When you smile, when you laugh, rather, you smile. You, you can see your teeth. We've got, a ca we've got cameras with special software that pick up on the whites of your teeth. I'm being serious. And that information is fed back to Robo Jace wirelessly. These microphones, this whole array of mics, also feed back to Robo Jace. You can hear if you laugh. You can also hear if you're quiet. If he drops a stinker and, it, and, it, and the joke dies, he can, he can sense that too. All of that will go into his final performance. So, are you ready for this? Yeah. Okay, let's get this uh, uh, gadget show like Christmas Comedy Club going on the compare. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. Hey. All right, let's come along. Yeah, there's probably a reason for that. <laughs> okay. You get the idea. I'm now going to enter uh, on stage. Uh, what a fantastic act! Our biggest night for the evening. The king of comedy. That is comedy. Robo James, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. It's great to be here. Hi, sir. That's a lovely shirt you're wearing. Did your motherboard dress you? <laughs> well, let's get started. I've got lots to get through, and I've only got ten hours of battery life left. Did a great gig last week, got loads of laughs. It was only afterwards I realised I'd done the whole thing with Madonna now. <laughs> In my spare time, I like to strap keyboards to my feet and dance. I'm a type dancer. Oh. I'll tell you what turns me on. My downloading. Well, hey! I've got squids. I downloaded something dodgy this morning. <laughs> it's dangerous me the computer. You can crash at any time. My parents told me it was rude to point and click. <laughs> I've been banned from my local tennis club. I kept trying to surf the net. <laughs> what is a robot's favourite software? Android. Sometimes my friends find it hard to understand me because I speak in code. Recently, I did laser eye surgery. Now, I can shoot lasers out of both eyes. <laughs> Thank you very much. You've been a great audience. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of the show. So you probably gathered, well done, Robert James. You probably gathered from his jokes. They're all tech related. That was the challenge to the comedy writer. All of those jokes, it was pretty, could you tell what he's delivering? He's delivering, the machine was thinking about it. That code was there, you know, delivering those jokes. It's astonishing, it's a world first, and you were part of it, thank you so much. Please look out for that on the forthcoming episode of The Gadget Show. Come on, John and Polly, come and join us on stage as we applaud Comedy Robo Jones, ladies and gentlemen, and a great performance. I think we're gonna get there, don't you? He's very close. He's getting there. He's got funnier as the, as the shows have gone on. He has. So, um, well, I think we need a voiceover, don't we? We have one robot right. for the tree, which is a caterpillar kit by Rx. It's robotic and you make it yourself. Nice. Okay, well, that goes under the tree. Thank you very much, Jace. We're going to move on to day 11. Uh, we're sticking with robotics and we're looking at this very cool robotic toy we just found downstairs. It's called the Attachment. Uh, it's got six legs and it's got a defence mechanism if you hit its little claws here. The shields pop off and it's even got a nerf gun up here so it can fire little nerf pellets. However, as Jace mentioned, we've worked quite a lot with robots.
Robo Challenge on the Gadget Show, and I saw this and thought, you know what? We can create a monster out of that. And look what they did. <laughs> Dropping, and you don't need to be Einstein to work out that all these drums on stage <laughs> mean that we've got a, dr- a drum themed final day of Christmas. Please give it up one more time, ladies and gentlemen, for one of the greatest drummers on the planet. His name's Craig Blundell. <laughs> Work. In fact, you probably hear it every week. 
uh, because you're a session musician, you work for all kinds of other BBC, for adverts, for bands, bands like, uh, I've filled in recently for bands like, oh, Friends and bands like Deep Purple, Rainbow King, and that. <laughs> So serious, serious bands. I love it. And in front of you is a clever piece of kit called the Octopad. Yes. What's its relevance right here? Well, I do also do quite a lot of remixing. So when, I, when I'm remixing drums, this is pretty much paramount to my job, previously. In fact, I think on this machine, you remix the Gadget Show theme tune, which is the new version that we hear every Monday night. Yeah, yeah, I did. And the great thing about this is that you don't necessarily need to be a drummer to use it out in the studio or live, because it's got what's something that's called real-time quantizing. So I'll play some information into the pad, and it will decide where the beats are and then lock them down. Right, okay. So, do you want to give it a go? Should we try it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, okay. So, let's set up a little click and I'll get going. So, four beats, off we go. Let's go quick. Okay. So, Jace, all I want you to do is round the bottom of the four pads, hit them as fast as you possibly can. Just go for it. Now? Go for it. Challenge the designer of Robo Jays. Give it up for Grant. You know, that is out of his laboratory, his workshop. What's it like in the outside world, well, dude? It's a bit scary. Nice! <laughs> okay, so back to this. Uh, we've got 12, 12 people on stage. Yeah. So we're going to recreate 12 drummers drumming. As we've said already, not everyone's a drummer. So we're going to use a theme. We're going to use syllables. When I'm teaching drums or trying to educate people in drums, use syllables in words. If you can say your name, yeah. it translates to your hand, you can play the word. And that's the theme. So th throughout this, the theme we'll be thinking of is Pollyanna Woodward. All right. I don't think that's going to be very difficult for most people. Exactly. So right the way from the back, start at the back in character yes, blocks. We're going to be going Pollyanna Woodward, Pollyanna Woodward. And the guys down the line will be playing each individual part of that on the different set of instruments. So Jace, sample, do you want to start it? And we're off. What do I do? Just hit the top one. And we're off. So, Polly's got the first one. You're the tough king. Well, thank you. Ready? Yeah.
RIP five by Roland to put under the tree for day number Got it. 12. Oh, Craig, can you do me one favour, my darling? Can you play me a drum roll, please? And the reason being is because I think we have pretty much reached, I guess, what we call the summit, the zenith, the climax of the show, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, in a moment, one person in this room, but with everything that's under our tree. Okay, the random name generator, so Houston. It's in Houston. He's doing what it's designed to do. Okay, that is randomly. Choose one name from you lot. If your name is there, scream, shout, get up, and make your way to the stage. 